Okay, so we're approaching the end of the school summer holidays now, and it's been a busy few weeks on Andromeda. I uh, haven't really had a chance to make many videos um, because I've just been focusing on getting the work done, uh, mainly because I'm at the stage now where it's a two-person job. So whenever I've had someone down the boatyard to help me, I've had to utilize that time as much as possible and uh, really crack on, which, which means I hadn't really had the chance to get the camera out much. But I can talk you through what we've done so far, bring you up to speed. Um, and then we can have a look at what needs doing next because um, I've got a couple of jobs that I can do on my own so we're going to take a look at those today as well. So as you can see behind me, um, the inside of the hull looks a little bit different to when you last saw it. Um, all back here has been refastened, um, either the nails have been replaced or they've been tightened up, uh, or rather the robes have been tightened up and that whole area has been painted with uh, bilge and locker paint, it's called International Dampling. Um, <clears throat> so I've kind of opted to use that paint everywhere because it's kind of grease proof, oil proof, um, it's pretty thick, hardcore stuff. Um, I know you probably wouldn't want the entire interior of a boat to be that colour grey, um, but certainly the planking and the deck head, the underside of the deck, I'm going to treat with Dampling just to try and protect it as much as possible. One of the things I had to think about when I was putting this paint on though uh, was the fact that although we've tightened up these planks uh, there is still a, going to be a very small gap between them because uh, you know it's not really going to be possible to make a fully watertight seal until the boat is taken up and what I don't want to happen is to dribble paint down between those planks because that's just another place where they won't sit flush together and it will allow water to get in. Um, so. You know, when you have a closer look at the these planks and frames, the paint job isn't that great. I've put it on fairly thin, um, but the main reason for that is, like I say, because I don't want to dribble paint down between the planks. And then once she's gone in the water and taken up a bit, I'll put a second coat on. And again, that'll be quite a thin coat, but those two coats combined should look a bit better and it should protect the woodwork a bit more. Um, but I'm really pleased with how the riveting and tightening up has gone so far. So if we, if we place a line just below my hand, it's just out of shot really, uh, you can see there's a little bit of woodwork here um, where we haven't fastened yet. Um, I've gone all the way down to the keel at the stern there, um, but from that line forwards and above, all the way up to the deck, uh, the boat has been fully refastened and tightened up all the way to the bow. So it's quite a lot of fastenings there. Um, and there were a couple of places that I just couldn't get to um, because there were some really well fitted bulkheads and tanks and stuff like that in the way and to take them out would have been a really big job uh, and I'm aware that we've had one of the hottest summers in the UK for a very long time and this boat just needs to get back in the water as soon as possible. So there are a couple of places that I've not been able to tighten up but looking at it from the outside the gaps aren't too bad and we'll just use a little bit of sealant to, to kind of help that take up. And you know, I've got those places in the back of my mind and written down and logged on this video. So um, you know, in future years, if I want to address those, I can do that at some point. Um, but the main bulk of the job has been done on this side of the boat. Okay, so up on the port side of the boat, um, you can see uh, these nail heads have been hardened up or replaced all the way from the gunnel, which is about three feet above my hand, um, all the way down to the keel in this forward section. Um, and then, you know, a couple of feet behind me, below the waterline, from there to the transom, uh, we still need to do. Um, but getting in all of these lockers on the inside of the boat and things like that was a pretty tricky job. So I'm pleased that that's done. Also up the front here, I have uh, recorked the seam that runs along the forward ends of the planks. Um, I've recorked that with cotton all the way down the stem. Uh, it then turns into the garboard plank seam where the garboard joins the keel. Um, that's been recorked with cotton as well. Basically all the way from here, all the way along the keel, all the way up the stern post uh, to the transom. Um, and then I've used a stopping compound uh, called butyl rubber which is this really kind of soft stuff. It's been on here for a few days now, 
um, and as you can see, you know, it doesn't come off on my fingers uh, because it's skinned over, but in the middle it stays soft and rubbery basically forever. So um, that's a really good stopping compound and it cleans up with white spirit. So if I want to, just to take that slight beaded edge off it, um, I could use a rag with some white spirits just to clean that up. Um, but I'm really pleased with how that's gone in and it's relatively cheap. Um, you know, if you look at polysulfides uh, like Sikaflex and CT1 and those kinds of products, they're really good, really strong adhesives, strong sealants, um, but they do go quite hard over a period of time, a little bit too hard for woodwork, I think, um, and they cost over 10 or 12 pounds for a tube that goes into a mastic gun. Um, I think this was more like five pounds for a tube, so, um, you know, really cheap, nice and soft, so it works really well as a, as a stopping compound on a wooden boat. Um, and yep, that's been stopped uh, the whole way along. So that's the only seam on the boat that's caught and corked and stopped is uh, this seam either side. So I'll, I'll do the same on the other side when I get to that point. Okay, so walking on the boat, let's have a, a little look at how far we've managed to get. It's a bit tight down here these days. It's quite dark as well, so I struggle to see. Uh, we get to the back of the boat. Um, you can see these fastenings here have been tightened up all the way along forward. Now you might be wondering what this strange uh, peachy coloured stuff is. Um, it's actually a traditional um, sealant compound uh, called red lead putty. It's not very commonly used these days and I think it's probably because the lead is, is quite toxic really. It's not very good for the environment. Um, but I was given a bucket of this stuff and it's really quite expensive to get you know, the good quality traditional stuff. And it's a combination of linseed oil, um, oil-based putty, so linseed oil putty and red lead powder mixed in the right ratio. Uh, the tub that someone gave me was a little bit higher than the bottom, but once it sort of mixed it up and warmed it up, it went in really well. And you know, when, when it's warm, I sort of had my gloves on and I sort of rolled it up into a ball. I can only describe it as like a peanut butter consistency, so sticky. So I put that into all of these cracks um, in the stern post just to give that oak a chance to take up without being you know, overcome with too much water. I've done the same in the stem up at the bell and I may have to do it in the keel, although the keel timber down here on, on this side of the boat is looking pretty good at the moment. Um, on the port side it's not looking too good so I may put some of that in the shakes in the grain just to try and help the boat uh, when she goes in the water. It's kind of gone off a bit now but it's still really soft. I can push my finger into it and that will stay soft for a very long time. So um, you know traditionally it was a good good product for, for that kind of purpose. I don't really want to be sailing around a toxic boat in the water. Um, that's not up my street at all. But, um, you know, it's a traditional product that is used with wooden boats and I've tried not to use too much of it, just where I have to, because I've got to use something to um, keep the boat afloat and to try and stop, um, you know, fungus and things like that growing in the wood. So um, hopefully just a little bit in the shakes here and there won't cause too much of a problem to the environment. But if there is an environmentally friendly alternative solution that is just as good then I am 100% interested in that. So far we've got it all to do still on the starboard side um, and, and that is a big job. I've, I'm sort of not even halfway through refastening the boat yet and I'm aware that time is ticking on um, but this is the difficulty with uh, copper nails and ropes you know you're, you're reliant on somebody banging in the nail from the outside and holding up a big lump of metal while you trim it off on the inside and peen it over. So it's a two person job. Um, and the majority of this project, I've just been doing it on my own. So I am reliant on people helping me. Um, and the people that have helped me so far has mostly been my dad and my brother. And they've done you know, a really fantastic job and worked really hard. It's pretty hard labor doing this. So um, I can't really be fussy, but it has just slowed the project down a little bit. 
so I've got to try and do these kind of one person jobs as and when I can. So what we're going to be looking at today is down here in the bilge, um, up the floor timbers. I think I might have a couple of problems with a couple of them, but we're going to take a closer look. Um, I'm going to take some measurements off them just in case I need to remake them and I'm probably going to ask your opinion as well on what you think about them. Um, but let's have a look anyway at what, what it is we're dealing with. Okay, so I'm sat right down in the bilge on top of the keel at the moment and we're looking at this floor timber here, uh, which you can only just see in shot, and this floor timber back here. Now, these two are the two floor timbers that are only accessible to me when the engine is out. Um, it's a very big engine. I don't plan on taking it out again unless I absolutely have to. So if I'm gonna do anything with these floor timbers, now is the time to do it. What I've noticed over the last few weeks, and I've looked back at some videos and pictures and things like that, uh, and I can see that this problem has developed over the last few weeks, is that there's a split running in for the port side edge of each floor timber. Now, I, I'm sure that this has got something to do with the boat drying out and the weather being so hot, and it may be because she's leaning over very slightly to port at the moment, um, which could be putting a bit of pressure on the keel and on those fastenings. Um, I have no doubt that the structure of the wood is still absolutely fine. However, that is a point where salt water is potentially gonna be able to get into the boat. Uh, because I'm gonna say that these splits are open, uh, maybe, let's have a look four or five millimeters, okay, so it's quite significant. How these floor timbers are fastened are, there are bolts that go straight through the floor and they bolt this timber to the keel, and essentially the keel is hung off these timbers. Um, and then there are also screws or nails, mechanical fastenings of some kind, through the planking from the outside into the floor timber. So I'm sure those splits are there because that's where the mechanical fastening it's going into the floor from the outside. Now, I didn't, re I didn't really want to have to replace these because um, I've never made a floor timber before. It looks like there's quite a lot of angles going on, so it could be a bit of a tricky job. Um, and there's a bit of wood involved in all of the floors in this boat. They're, they're quite chunky. Um, but I think just for my own peace of mind, I'm probably gonna replace these two here. Um, and it shouldn't be too hard to get out because as you can see here, the keel bolt's already gone loose because the boat has dried out so much. Um, so I think what I need to do, if I'm going to replace these, um, the first thing I wanna do is measure the size of them and see if I can find a piece of wood that's the right kind of size to get them out of, or maybe even a couple of bits of wood laminated together. Um, and then I'm gonna have a little hunt around and see what I can find from a wood point of view before I take them out. Um, but it's one of those things where if I put the engine in and I put the boat in and then I start seeing some leaks coming from under the engine, in the back of my mind I'll think, I know what that is, I know where it's coming from, I can't fix it now, uh, but I should have done when I had the chance to. So it may not be a problem, but if it's only a few hours work to make some new ones, I think that's probably what I'm going to do. Uh, so once I've found a bit of wood the right kind of size, I need to uh, take the nuts off the keel bolts, I need to get the mechanical fastenings from the outside, and I can take a template off these two bits of wood and reproduce them. So um, I'm just going to take some measurements, then we're going to jump outside, see if we can locate where the fastenings are, um, and see what kind of fastenings they are. I have identified where one of the floor timbers is on the outside of the boat, and I've just uh, drawn around it with my pencil and written floor next to one of the fastenings. So I'm just gonna come in here and have a little poke around and see what we've got. Okay, that is definitely, I'll just scrape all this stuff out. Okay, that is definitely a screw. Yep, there's a clear slot for that which is good news because I might be able to back that screw out quite easily. And if I just have a little look at what's above here. Yep, 
that's another screw. Okay, so I'm confident now, having scraped a bit of putty out of these fastenings, that we've got a screw here, uh, and this is possibly where the garboard plank is screwed to the keel. Uh, there will be a rebate in the keel that this garboard plank sits into, uh, and you can see that there's a shake along the garboard plank there, um, where it's probably is where the keel comes to, um, which is not great, but we'll just leave that for now. Um, we've then got one, two, three screws going into the floor timber, um, and there appears to be a nail up here, um, which is a little bit strange. Uh, so we've got a bit of a mixture of stuff. Hopefully we can back those out without causing too much damage. If needs be, we can drill these holes a bit bigger um, and plug them and then re-drill them for new screws. Uh, this area of wood on this first broad strake uh, does not look too good. And to be honest, that kind of is a common theme all the way along the edge of that plank. Um, I don't really know what I can do about that. I can probably put some uh, red lead putty in these shakes and hope that it takes up. Um, alternatively, I need to have a think about what the best thing is to do. Uh, but that's that rear floor timber that we were looking at in the cabin, the smallest one of them all. So um, I've taken some measurements off that now and I'm gonna go and have a hunt around for some wood. If I can find a bit of wood roughly the right size, then I'm gonna think about how best to get this out without causing too much damage. So uh, trying my hardest not to get too dirty. I think I've done quite well actually, um, because I didn't bring any gloves today. Uh, I managed to get the four screws out of the floor timbers that were holding them in place. Um, I figured the very bottom screw was holding the garboard plank to the oak keel, um, and the one at the very top was just the, the rivet on the planks that would have been put in place before the floors went in. So. These are the screws that I've got out. Okay, hold one up for you to see. Um, they're pretty big, maybe size 14, size 16. Uh, I don't know if they're bronze or brass. I think they're brass actually. Um, but you can see um, that the shaft on it is just full of soggy wood. And it seems really obvious to me now. I thought, will they be okay, won't they be okay? But those two floor timbers are under the engine. All of the horrible stuff that comes out of diesel engines uh, that goes downwards is going to be going into those floor timbers, uh, into these screw threads, damaging the wood around it. So, I mean, the planking looked pretty ropey around there where I pulled those screws out. Um, I might have to let a couple of pieces of wood in. Um, I'm not really sure. I'll have to have a closer look at that. Um, but I definitely need to replace that floor timber at the back that I've just got these screws out of um, because yeah three out of the four screws just pulled out in my in my hands um, they turned about a quarter of a turn and then they were just going around in circles so the inside of that floor timber it must be pretty mushy and that's not going to do its job effectively so I do need to replace that I might be able to reuse these screws um, but I definitely need to replace that floor timber. So I'm now gonna go home and try and find a tool to get the keel bolt nut off. Uh, I've measured it at 42 mil, so it's a pretty big nut. I don't know if I've got a socket that big, but I'm gonna have a little route around in my toolbox at home, see what I can find. Then I'm gonna come back down. If I can draw that nut off, I think I should just be able to lift that floor timber straight out. Don't know. Uh, I'm not sure how else it would be fastened, but, um, 
I'll bring a couple of crowbars and things like that down just in case there are any problems um, and maybe some sort of WD-40 or something to try and free up that nut in case it gets stuck. So yeah, I'm gonna go and get cleaned up, get some tools and then we'll head back down. So we're back down in this hole, looking at this floor timber here. Um, I've got some tools that might do the job. Um, not ideal. Um, I have got a one inch socket set somewhere. I just don't know where. So I'm gonna have a go with these first of all and, and see how this goes. Um, probably it's not gonna budge at all, is what I predict will be the case. Uh, but we will see, won't we? These probably aren't going to go big enough. And they might just about. There we go. Okay. So backwards and forwards to start with, and then a little bit further. Grip it quite as tight. what looks like it was once a fibre washer it could just be a load of cotton uh, some sort of cotton washer just as an attempt to cork that and in actual fact it looks like there's a bit of a rebate in the top of the floor to let that cotton go in so that is good to know um, okay so I mean that's the bit that I thought was going to be difficult let's uh, see what we can do next Gonna need a, I don't know, a bar or a mallet or something like that. That is not budging at all.
That is not budging at all. There's a lot of stuff down here, a lot of stuff down here and here, sort of putty and all that kind of thing, that's firmly holding that floor timber in place. Um, there, are, there are two holes here to allow the bilge water to go through. I can't remember what they're called, but I'm wondering if I can get a piece of rope around those with a purchase on it. Um, if I can somehow pull upwards by putting a beam across the hull, if that'll free it off. Maybe I need to spray some stuff down here to try and free that off. Okay, so the sound of the bang now has changed from a sort of dull thud to a quite loud rattle, which gives me a bit of indication that something may be moving, you know, it's moving around a bit. And I can see just leverage under this hull has lifted that floor up off the keel by maybe a quarter of an inch. So I feel like I'm making a little bit of progress there. This um, floor timber just down here, uh, just down here, is uh, really frustrating me. I know I haven't spent a whole lot of time on it, I've only spent a sort of a morning, a few hours trying to get it to, trying to figure out what to do with it really. But uh, I thought it was coming up a little bit, but I've realised actually uh, it's not come up at all. Um, it's just that the keel had shrunk away underneath it a little bit because um, this end of the keel has dried out quite a lot. The thing is, I hate to leave a job unfinished, but it's getting towards the end of the day, and you know I've got to go home and get more stuff and then come back if I'm going to try and finish this today. And I don't really think I've got time to do that. I need to come down with the multi-tool, just run it down between the floor and the planks, and just sweep out all of that putty and any um, fastenings that I haven't seen, it'll just cut them off. Maybe that's the way to go. I know it's a bit extreme. I don't really like doing stuff like that where it's like dismantling things um, in a crude way, but um, so far when I've done that, it's gone right, so fingers crossed. Um, if you've got any suggestions on how to get this floor timber out, please comment below, let me know. Um, and I would appreciate any advice at all because I've never taken one of these out before.